Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we're talking Eagles Bucks that just wrapped up here Thursday Night Football. Bucks win 28-22. Ends up being a lot closer at the end than the game had been for much of it. Bucks are able to, or Eagles are able to score a couple touchdowns there at the end and try to make it a game, but they never get the ball back and Bucks win. So just Bucks were really solid for most of that game to start. And then Brady, 34, 42, 297, two touchdowns, threw a pick, but all around pretty good. Antonio Brown caught one touchdown, nine catches, 93 yards. He really led the way this one. And I mean, nine for 93 because the other big receivers, you know, Godwin and Evans, Godwin five for 43, Evans two for 27. It was definitely Brown. And then um, OJ Howard sighting there, six for 49, a touchdown. Crazy to see, you know, maybe, maybe we'll start seeing more OJ Howard. You know, the guy has, has the talent. It just never came together. And then Fournette with a great game again, 22 carries, 81 yards. So, I mean, not high yard carry, but he's getting all the work. He had two touchdowns on the ground, caught six balls, 46 yards. Leonard Fournette, what, top 15 running back now going forward? Yeah, if he keeps playing like this, they're they're giving him options. He scored at least one you know, double-digit carries. You, you have to like what you're saying. And, and though I, there's a couple of different things to worry about, right? I, he doesn't ever – he probably won't ever break my top 10 because I, I still think this is a, you know, pass-first offense. But the other doubt that I had in my mind was, like, Rojo is there in the – somewhere he's going to steal, t- like, you know – just carries away from him has not come to fruition at all. I mean, he has only had five carries and they were trying to run out the clock kind of in the second half for for the most part. So if it was going to happen, that would have been a good time for it. So yeah, Leonard Fournette is an incredibly safe play. I think he is uh, one of those like top 20 running backs for sure. Moving forward until I see something drastically different, which is kind of interesting. You weren't sure how that was going to play out in the backfield. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really see this coming from him to be just this, this, like, the volume. I didn't think the volume was going to be there. That's, I think, the biggest thing with this is I didn't think he would get the volume he's getting. And he is. Ronald Jones doesn't matter at all. So if you're holding on to Ronald Jones, I mean, right, you sh- he should be dropped a long time ago at this point. Unless, I guess, if you want a handcuff to Fournette, but I wouldn't want that. I don't need Ronald Jones. He should just be gone. Yeah, so. I, I'm not. I don't, I don't think there's a real reason to have him on your bench at the moment. <laughs> but I mean, the team just solid. They keep rolling, right? Five and one. Brady's solid, keeps playing pretty well. And this was not even, I mean, it started off stronger than it ends up. I mean, I guess, but 297 two touchdowns, it's great. It really is. It's still, you know, still a great game from him. Everyone else, Antonio Brown, though, man, that was why we kept telling people Antonio Brown was the value out of those three receivers. He was not, what, 20, 25 spots difference and like there was at least 20 to 25 spots difference in the rankings we knew all along there he wasn't that far apart in what the actual production is going to be but shoot he's he's i mean it, at this point i mean going forward truly like what would you decide if you had to pick antonio brown or chris godwin right now mm. i mean uh, if i i probably play both of them i i am playing both of them in a handful of leagues Um, right now it's a tough one. Antonio Brown is kind of on a tear. We've also seen him fall off for a week. We've Godwin seems to be that middleman right now where he doesn't have the big game, but he has the okay game. If you're in PPR, he had like an okay night, uh, only 43 yards, not what you want to see from the guy, but yeah, he's kind of always in the middle. And then it's either Evans having a big game or Antonio Brown kind of funny. Um, but yeah, right now I, I wouldn't, I, I kind of. I wouldn't have any issue if people said, hey, I'm going to ride the wave. I'm going to go with Antonio Brown over Chris Godwin. I mean, it's a little risky, but at the same time, any one of these guys can break out. So you're kind of, why not play the hot hand? I don't have anything against it. I mean, it became pretty even. It's pretty even at this point. So, I mean, it is pretty even. And maybe I'm, I'm, uh, I'm viewing this from the wrong angle too, because in my mind, I do feel like, uh, like I said, Evans and, and Antonio Brown, even Godwin, any one of them can go off at any point. But right now, out of the three of them, I do feel like Evans is the most risky play. Do you feel the same way or no? 
I mean, yeah, he's still like he's going to have like he did tonight, right? Two for 27. He's going to do that game. He had a three for 24 to start the year. He actually had a pretty good stretch. Those four, he had four okay games, you know, five for 75, two touchdowns was good. Eight for 106 was good. Seven for 75 was fine. You know, just didn't get touched on six for 113 and two touchdowns was obviously awesome. Then you get a two for 27. But that's just that's that's the Mike Evans experience. Well, and that, that's the hard part, because when you're trying to pick apart who's going to do well right now, there's been enough where everyone can do well. And and playing Philly, I was hoping that they would score a little more early on. Be, so Tom Brady would keep throwing. Mm-hmm. I think this is the the danger in picking players be, when they're just going to kind of a coast to a win right like that's always the the worry about playing like when you're like oh they're gonna play a team that they're just clearly better than you're like oh they could put up a lot of points has not generally worked out that way yet it's usually okay tit for tat if you're going big then we'll go big and we'll we'll have to keep scoring uh today it just didn't happen that way but yeah i don't know It's, it's a very difficult to figure out who is actually the the right one to play if you ask me pick one right now and you can only play one I would probably go Antonio Brown. Well, so before before tonight coming into this game, Godwin was wide receiver 17 on the year in standard scoring, wide receiver 17. And um, Antonio Brown was wide receiver 18. And that's missing one game. So his average, his points per game were already, his points per game in standard were 12.8. Godwin's were, was 10.6 before tonight when Brown definitely outplayed Godwin. So he's ahead of him on the year missing a game. So yeah. Where's Mike Evans on that? So he's Mike Evans was 11 coming into the night. So obviously he'll drop, Um, but his average points per game before tonight was 12.7 Brown's 12.8. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, It's kind of funny. I mean, we, we not saying that we knew who was going to, finish ahead of anyone else but we we knew that immediately it wasn't going to be that far off and yeah the value was it was just yeah, too the far value off. but yeah kind of funny it, and because evans was ranked the highest of the three or at least on right. most you know he was the guy that we were kind of like ah stay away from we knew that he could have really good stretches but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see what happens the rest of the year but i mean all three of them are very good wide receivers so eagle side of things um Jalen Hurts, he, this is, J, this is Jalen Hurts. Like, this wasn't a good game, right? This was no, not good. No, he had a bad game. I mean, let's just, he had a bad game. And he for, scored 27 points in fantasy. Yeah, he, and it's so funny to watch too. There was one drive that said it all. It was in the second half. Miles Sanders pretty much got half of his carries. He only had nine for 56. He had a, kind of a big drive. He was a big part of it. They got down to the five. They gave it to him. He got down to like the one and then immediately they tried to pass with Hertz and, I, and he, they missed the pass. And I was like, Oh, okay. Like Miles Sanders could get back into it. Maybe this will like get him going. They gave him one carry and he just gets stopped up. And then immediately Hertz goes on kind of like a Willie pitch, it kind of deal mm-hmm. runs in the end zone for another one of his rushing touchdowns. And I'm like, he is the death to, to all running back possibilities on this team. I oh, mean, yeah. and that's good for hurt owners. This is – it's, oh like, just God. good for Hurts. Yeah, whole, it, the, the rest of the team is brutal. Yeah. It, it, it was hard to watch today, and, and Bucks do have a good D, but it was, it was hard to watch. I mean, he only had 115 yards passing. That would get people benched. You know, it's – that's that's the, the worry I'm having with her. I mean, he's going to be the guy. I mean, they're not going to bench him this year, but it's – at least you wouldn't think so. They shouldn't I mean, bench who, him, yeah. but – who are you going to bench him for? And this is why we felt relatively safe about it too. Yeah. No one behind him. And, and because of these well, rushing I mean, ability, which yeah. he keeps rushing touchdowns in, we look like geniuses being like, yeah, he's going to be a good fantasy football player. Yeah. No matter but what, like, keep he's, losing good like this, he's, he's great for fantasy football. A hundred, I mean, 115 yards passing. I mean, that is, that's pretty rough. And so it's got to be like every backup in the league is like, I could do that. <laughs> like Andy Dalton is over here. Like I get benched every time. Tyrod Taylor is like, for the love of God, would someone give me this chance? Yep. I mean, he just, that, he has the rushing ability. If it wasn't for that, I mean, he's just not great. He's just not great. And it, it's hurting the rest of the, I mean, again, yeah, I don't want it, it, it's good for Jalen Hurts owners, but it, it is hurting Sanders a lot. And I don't think it's getting the full potential of Devontae Smith out there. No, no, not at all. And I mean, you could go down. I think it hurts everyone. And we will never really know what Jalen Rager could do. He's kind of like, you know, between injury and and just young quarterback play at the moment. 
he, like he could kind of waste his first contract in a place where you just have no idea if he's capable of anything. Right. Zach Ertz did have a touchdown today. We'll mention that he like Jalen Hurts did throw one touchdown uh, through an interception as well. But Zach Ertz without uh, Dallas Goddard there caught a touchdown, you know, so if you did play him uh, in, in the place of Goddard because he was out or whatever, you're, your week is safe because he yeah. was the tight end that caught a touchdown. So that's great. But other than that, yeah, I'm, I was hoping to see more out of Devontae Smith. I honestly thought the Bucks would put up a few more points, but it really petered out in that second yeah. half. They, well, like then, Buccaneers just decided to slow it down. Uh, Kenny Gainwell was just non-existent tonight. I think, what, two targets, one catch, one yard. No carries. That's, just... that's multiple games now, too. He It feels like – for a moment, it felt like he was, they were using him more and more. And now they're I, – I don't know if that's a health thing for Miles Sanders or game plan that just wasn't working. I'm not sure. But game yeah. will disappear real quick. Yeah, definitely, definitely droppable for sure. That's – he's – I mean, he's not rostered in all that many places anyway yet. But, I mean, he was starting to get picked up. I've seen him picked up. But, yeah, no need. It's just you're never going to play him. No. I, and – Jumping back to the Bucks for one moment, O.J. Howard, he really did have a nice game. And, and we always talk about the tight end is very thin. Yeah. Seven targets today, six catches, 49 yards, and a touchdown. He looked good when he had the ball. He really did. Uh, Cameron Bray was still there. He got four targets, three for 26. Mm-hmm. O.J. Howard, if someone is hurting at tight end position, is he someone you're looking at? Or do you well, think you have just... to see it again? Because th- once again, there's a million people to throw it to at this well, team. But Gronk will be back. When though I don't know. Like I was his, gonna say their buys week nine. They might just wait till the buy. Who knows? You know, five and one. I mean, he was on a tear. Yeah, but yeah honestly, I mean, why, why rush him back? There is no need to rush him back. There just isn't. And <laughs> you, you don't have enough people to throw it to. <laughs> no, it's yeah. There's just not just not en- enough reason there to rush him back. But yeah, if, honestly, OJ Howard is very interesting to me. If Gronk's not there, OJ, we know he's he's a talented tight end. Like, and I don't know. We said a million times in the show about how tight ends sometimes just take longer, right? And maybe this is just one of those instances where, you know, but again, even if he's even if he's improved and he's much better, yeah, there's still Evans, there's still Godwin, there's still Brown than him. You know, there's a bunch of guys for the ball too. So but you know what? He's not a he's shit, he's not a bad lottery pick if you're just you have nothing else, right? And a lot of times if you're most leagues, you're probably just like, hey, take a shot. Let's see if something happens here. So yeah, definitely. Um, he's the one to have over. Like, if you if you had picked up Bray and you had Gronk injured or something, yeah, you know, I'd rather have Howard than Bray all day. At this point, oh Bray, yeah, yeah, Bray's had a few weeks of not doing too much. I know Howard and Howard. Um, this is his first game where he's really done a lot, but still, I'd still rather have that. We know what Bray is. Yeah. Moving forward, after this passing performance by Jalen Hurts. Does this tell you anything else? Or are you kind of just running with him right now? You just yeah. have to. You just you, you play him. You know? Yeah. And also Tom Brady, he, you know, not a great fantasy output, especially after his last one. Um, that myself included, QB is a strange one, especially if you're in like a, a 10 uh, person league because there was a lot of quarterbacks out there. Tom Brady was one that you could have gotten a little bit later. You might have it paired up with other guys. How are you approaching that? As far as I have a Lamar and a Tom Brady, I have a Herbert and a, you know, you could have stacked these guys. How, like for this one, it was a very, it was a good matchup for him and he just ended up not doing it. And there's not a whole lot you can do, but is there any tricks you can tell people to how to diagnose who's going to have a, a good game and who is not going to? To be honest, this is why I don't like, I don't like rostering two quarterbacks. This is like almost my thing. I don't want to pick. I don't want to choose week to week. I don't want to play these matchups because it doesn't always play out like you think it's going to. It, I, I don't like it. I honestly, if you have Brady, a lot of times, yeah, you probably have him as your second. I would honestly still be looking to trade him. If you if it's, you know, 10, 12 team leagues, right? That quarterback's definitely not I mean. Well, if you need another quarterback, but I I would trade him. I would definitely trade. If, if, if you get to 12 team leagues and there's probably less options, he's your second, I would trade him. There's going to be someone out there that needs a quarterback and you can get a useful player, I believe for him. I, I just, I hate the, I hate the, the trying to pick and choose, but if Brady's your quarterback, sure. It's good. I mean, they got the bears, they got the saints, they got to buy, but after that buy, they play, um, they have a nice little stretch starting week 10. They got the, they got Washington, 
They have the Giants. They have the Colts. They have the Falcons. Not a bad little stretch there. They can put up some points. Oh, this is interesting, though. Okay. I know we're getting off track, but I, I like this one, so I'm going to run with it for a second. So that's very interesting. So you like one quarterback, and right now you're saying, Brad, you, you know, trade him. Why not? Like, he, yeah. he has a lot of value at the moment. The question would be, who are you, who would you rather keep? Like, how do you rank them for the rest of the year? Because right now, before going into this, I believe Tom Brady was number one overall. Like, you know, just how it fell, that was the numbers that they had put up. There's a lot of guys around him. But what quarterbacks would you rather have right now? Like, uh, obviously, you would still rather have Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, I, I take it, and Kyler Murray, right? Those three you'd rather have. I'd rather have those three. I'd, I'd rather have Lamar myself i would rather have lamar Lamar, yeah Um, and what about what about uh dak and even jalen hurts would you rather have like those two over them or no so so let's see allen mahomes jackson murray i'd probably rather have dak i'd i'd probably rather have brady than hurts to be honest um it feels safer even though obviously we've just talked about hurts just doesn't go his pointer is there right but i just worry about that just really falling off like one day maybe it does but I'd probably okay, rather so, have Brady than than Hurts. So, and that's interesting because you could have a, an assortment of any. Where does Her and Herbert? Uh, you know what? And Herbert, I'd probably rather have Herbert than Brady. Honestly, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I agree. It's with not. That it's one. not. It's but, but there's that's a perfect situation for me. I would make a choice. Okay, Herbert, Brady, Herbert, Brady. I want Herbert. I'm trading away Brady because they're too close. <laughs> they're yeah, too close. They are, no, they are. Yeah. And I would just be. I would drive myself crazy trying to pick a quarterback every week, and I just don't need that stress in my life. Oh, no, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I mean, we're in way too many leagues, but I think Brady is one name that constantly comes yeah. up because he was always near the end. So I definitely have like a Hurts Brady. I have a Lamar Brady. I have a Herbert and Lamar. No, I mean, you have like these really weird yeah. ones. Well, because, you know, at some point it was hard to pass up on it. I'm sure I'm not the only one that had this issue. So um, yeah, that's a very interesting to pick, especially right now, because if you do have one of those other guys you named, I think you have like seven, eight guys that you'd rather have instead of Brady for the rest of the year. Doesn't mean you, well, you know, doesn't mean I guess I mean, uh, a couple of those games I think, have. you know, what? I think I'd still want Aaron Rodgers over Brady. Oh, wow. Okay. It's, it's I mean, not that, that again, that's not far off at all. It's close. So no, it's even, but again, it's one of those situations where, you know what? I don't want to choose. I don't want to choose. Yeah, no, it's a very, very, very good point. It's more of who, like, what value can get for him mm-hmm. and how how do you choose which one? I guess the the one fear people would have is what if the other guy gets hurt? Yeah. What it, what would be your what would be your contradiction to that? And if you already have a stacked team, I guess at that point you're you can just make up your mind, like I'm gonna run with, you know, Herbert over Brady the rest of the year, and I'm just gonna keep him for you know, in case you know what, things go awry. I get that, that feeling people have all the time. Yeah. Well, I have it in case of injury, but you know what, that I don't like to play like that. Cause I end up having people, you, you miss out on potential players you can have. I feel like, I mean, you could definitely get something for Brady at this point. You can get a good, useful player. There's no doubt in my mind. You get a useful player to one of those teams that one of the, like the guy who drafted Tannehill, right. Who Tannehill was the quarterback. He thought maybe Tannehill's going to be good. And he's right. Not been that. Like that, that's no. the kind of person you go find and, or the guy who's just streaming, you know, Kirk cousins and Sam Darnold every yeah. week and be like, or like just the, sick of it. The guy that just lost Russell Wilson. And has no the idea guy who just lost Russell play. Wilson. Perfect. Me. Yeah. Exactly. Trade with me. <laughs> you go, I would definitely, like, funny thing is again, I'm in, in another league we're in together. I lost Russell Wilson last week. First thing I did, I tried to trade for Tom Brady. <laughs> because he was the backup he was the second quarterback on the team yeah somebody, same there's a, a lot of them out there uh a lot of them out there right now I, yep. I don't know what the deal was during the league but you're seeing it now after the draft a lot of these guys because there's too many of them there's a lot of good quarterbacks and we're waiting to see how they shook out and i mean yeah so, yeah, I say yeah. If, you, anyway. if you have brady and you would like to move him because he's your second yeah, go find that. It's it's the guy who's yeah. Look, it's, he's playing Darnold. He's playing Heineke. He's playing Cousins. He's playing. He played Derek Carr earlier in the year. That was me for a bit. That was me. And now it's not me. I traded for Dak, but it was me. And thank you for dropping Heineke. So I have someone to pick up when go. Russell Wilson gets hurt. So now he did I have he very well Heineke, that one week. And now so, I have to figure out what to do. Yeah, he was really good for me. But all right, there we go. Well, actually, you know what? Real quick, a couple questions. Got a question yeah. that came in here. Just want. 
uh, from Brett, he emailed us at fantasyfootballprofit at gmail.com. So just a quick start set question, but I figured we'd get it, get an answer in for him. He said, sure. would you start as this half point PPR? Would you start LaVisca Chanel or Amon Ross St. Brown this coming week? So oh. Chanel is playing against Miami and St. Brown, who's I feel like been coming on a little bit, is playing against Cincinnati. Man, that is a really interesting. I, I kind of have to look at how they've been using Chanel because I'm so Chanel. Kind of, Two weeks ago, he was awesome, right? The day when um, Chark went down, Chenault was um, over 100 yards, I think, receiving that day. Last week, though, I believe he only had one catch. It was a big one. It was like 58 yards, I want to say, something like that. But it was only one catch. Yeah. Amon Ross St. Brown has quietly been starting to get some targets built. You said, yeah, you said half point? Half point. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I would I would actually probably ride. I would probably go Amon Ross. Amon Ross St. Brown. You know, I'm going to go I, that I too. I, I actually just, I pulled up quick. I wanted to see what the, what fantasy pros consensus was trying to tell us. They put Chanel at 40 and Amon Ross St. Brown at 51. So the, they, they go in the opposite way, but you know, I'm, I'm Amon Ross St. Brown. That's a highest I've seen him ranked. So. Yeah. And I, I'm kind of going for the, I'm going to go for the receptions. I think, I think St. Brown will have more receptions. Uh, Chanel probably does have a little more of the upside, but neither of these offenses score a whole lot. So I'm not, I, I'm not going to put my eggs in the touchdown basket for this. So yeah. I'm going to go for the guy that's stringing a couple of games and, and going in the right direction. Yep, definitely. Um, yeah, all right. There we go. That's going to be it for today. We'll be back Sunday night, talk about week six in the NFL. Talk to you guys then.